I'm an American. Actually, let me rephrase that. I'm a freedom-loving, burger-eating, red-blooded American. And today, I'm here to spread some of that freedom to Europe. I know you guys got a lot of problems over there with your e extremely low standards of living and your, your sky-high crime rates. So I think this continent could use a little bit of fixing up. First of all, I have one major problem with this continent's borders. Let's see if you can spot it. Let's take Belarus, for example. Take a look at its shape and tell me what it's missing. If you guessed a perfectly rectangular shape, then you are correct. All these wiggly lines just make the borders look so noisy and unappealing, but now with these nice and smooth borders, it's just, it's so much more pleasing to the eye. I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, the most optimal solution would be to make all the borders straight, but that's just too easy. Now I think it's time to address the British problem, but how about we start by separating the meat from the fat. I'm gonna deal with Ireland later, so for now let's send them over to their cousins in Massachusetts. Now that we have that dealt with, let's see what we can do for Great Britain. First of all, let's get rid of the need for Scottish independence from Great Britain since now they're no longer a part of Great Britain. I think it would be nice though to put the Isle of Man here as a nice little checkpoint between England and Scotland though. And I just had an epiphany for exactly what I want to do with Wales. First, we'll be splitting them off, and then I'll be taking them slightly far away, just a little bit further. We're almost to our destination, and we'll set them right next to New Zealand. But they won't be called Wales anymore, no, no, no. They're now known as the Central Island. Unfortunately for Wales, though, this now means that they will never be included on any world maps. But personally, I think it's a small price to pay for finally getting the B away from the English. As for Scotland, though, I think think they'd actually be better suited being directly attached to the rest of Europe. Now they're finally able to rejoin the European Union. And they also pretty much just look like a second Denmark, but we don't have to worry about that. And now all we have left is England. Before I decide England's fate though, I'm gonna get rid of Cornwall first. And I'll do that by giving Brittany a bit of an extension. And just for now, we'll make them part of France, but it's only to make the borders look a little better. We'll come back. Okay, now we're actually gonna deal with England. They look uh, a, a little bit like an amputee right now, but that's fine, because they're about to have a lot more important things to worry about. Obviously, we don't need to be plaguing Europe with this country anymore, so we're gonna be taking it away. And since the English are always complaining about how it's raining all the time, I thought it would be a good thing if I brought them closer to some place where it was a little more sunny. No, not here. Not here either. We're almost there. There we go. Antarctica. Now, you may be saying to yourself, wait a minute, it's not sunny in Antarctica. Well, that's where you're wrong. Because six months out of the year in Antarctica, the sun is out all the time, all day, every day. Sure, it may be like pitch black the other six months out of the year, but I'm sure it's fine. And I just thought of another good thing. Since the English are now near uncolonized territory, that means they can finally begin their colonial expansion again. Oh yeah, all these tiny, useless Antarctic islands are all yours, my friend. And think of it this way, it's now once again true that the sun does not set on the British Empire six months out of the year. Charles, you're now an emperor. But now this space feels a little empty, so I decided that the Isle of Man should take their place and come and fill in the gaps. Voila! Say hello to the island of Great Man. And I almost forgot about Ireland over here. Honestly, I don't really want to overcomplicate this too much, so let's just unite them. Under Northern Ireland. But honestly, I'm not really liking this red. It's it's just, it's, it's too British. And like, I don't really want to color them a shade of green because they kind of just were green. So, um, how about a shade of blue? I think that actually might work well. What do you guys think about this shade? Yeah, that's right, baby. Rhode Island, 51st state of the United States. I told you guys I was bringing freedom to this continent. Welcome to the free world, Ireland. All right, so we still have an entire continent to deal with, so let's let's speed things up a little here. I think the first thing that's really sticking out to me here is that there's just so much water in the Mediterranean Sea. Like, I know it's a sea, but it's just, it's too much. I think it's best if we just revive the Atlantropa project and just put a dam here, here, and of course, at Gibraltar as well. 
well. And after doing a quick little bit of draining, we're left with something like this. Sure, all the land might be an inhospitable desert, but, um, land is land. I mean, Europeans love that stuff, right? Now they have no need to colonize and conquer since they have extra living so I don't maybe not say that. Now that they have some extra territory at home. Now that I'm in such a diplomatic mood, I think I'm just going to single-handedly in one fell swoop solve the Greek-Turkish border dispute. Watch this. Where's the border? Where's the border? You can't have a border dispute without a border. Bam. World peace. I'm like Neville Chamberlain if he actually did something. I am the great mediator. And think about it this way, since I drained the entire Mediterranean, Russia has no need for a warm water port on the Black Sea. It literally doesn't go anywhere. So with that in mind, we can just return Crimea now. And uh, by that I meant return Crimea to the sea. No one needs it anymore. Ukraine's ports don't go anywhere. Russia's ports don't go anywhere. They both lose. Like I said, great compromiser. But I can already hear you saying, but that, that doesn't solve the conflict. It's, it's still going on. All right, let's think about the big picture here. So Russia wants Ukraine to be in Russia, right? But Ukraine doesn't want to have their territory be a part of Russia. So I have a solution for this. Bam, there we go. War over, problem solved. With this, I put Ukraine and Russia without Ukraine having to give territory to Russia. What do you think about that? I mean, you gotta admit, by definition, that means the conflict is over. Hey, no need to thank your old friend, Uncle Sam. I'm just doing my job. Now I wanna turn my eyes to Switzerland. There's nothing wrong with the borders, it's just the color. You know, Switzerland is known for being neutral and peaceful and compromising, but red signifies danger and alarm and it just, it just doesn't match up with the nature and the heart of the Swiss people. Yeah, so I think the best color to fix that is white. Yeah, so uh, the, the joke was that I, uh, th that I made Switzerland disappear. And you see, that's funny because, because like Switzerland doesn't exist anymore. And I guess like 10 million people just like perishing is like, ah, I'm, you know, now I'm thinking, ah. So I don't think we touched the Balkans yet, so let's get into that. After giving it a little bit of thought, I think I have the perfect solution for this place. Here's my thought process. The peoples of the Balkans have been crammed into this one peninsula for thousands of years and absolutely nothing good has come from it. So that's why I think the solution here is to give these nations all some personal space. Let's start with Romania. They should obviously be moved closer to the other romance speaking nations. I think right here north of Spain is a good place. There we go, that looks pretty good. I think Bulgaria should be moved far away from Turkey and Macedonia, so we'll put them right at the north side of the Black Sea. Now, I know you may be thinking that I just made another Crimea again, and um, yeah, that's pretty much what I did. But we don't think about the long-term consequences here. For now, Bulgaria, you're in a very safe position. Next, I need to move the Serbs as far away as possible from both Croatia and Kosovo. I think they'll feel right at home being just next to Russia in the Caspian Sea. There we go, perfect. And for Albania and Kosovo, I think they should be moved right next to Turkey. Macedonia should be moved away from Greece and be made into an island. I'm confident this will do wonders for their tourism industry. Also now, they can just change their name back to Macedonia and there's nothing Greece can do about it. And to cement the region's newfound peace, I think we need to move Bosnia somewhere completely different. And that place is is in Antarctica, right next to England. I'm sure they were feeling very lonely without their buddy Ireland, so I got them a replacement. And to make it feel as close to home as possible, I'll give them this part of northern Bosnia. <sighs> Peace at last. And with Bosnia gone, Croatia finally gets its beautiful beaches back. And the massive lake that's left shall now be known as Lake Peace. Balkans, consider yourself fixed. Now for Germany. You guys have caused too many problems in the last century, so I don't really think it's a good idea to leave you in one piece still. So let's change that. Eh, okay. That's a decent solution, but that's still two Germanys. And that's just too few for me. Hmm, okay. We're getting 
places now, but I still don't think that's enough. Okay, I'm liking what I'm seeing here, but I still don't think there's enough Germanys here. You know, let me try one more thing. Ah, there we go. Perfect. This is exactly what I was thinking of. With it being divided this much now, there's no way that Germany can pose a threat to the rest of Europe. If only the Allies had thought of this solution after World War II. I'm sure the Poles definitely approve of this move. And France as well, as they've now become the firm leader of the European Union. I know only good things will come from this. Speaking of France though, they've definitely got some problems that need fixing as well. Like the fact that Belgium exists and Wallonia isn't part of France. And also the fact that Monaco is not yet a part of France as well. Let's fix that. And finally, let's make sure both Koreas are also a part of France. Yeah, this feels right. I'm just kidding, come on. You thought I'd let France off the hook? Let's see the real fix now. First of all, France should not be on this continent. Instead, they'll be joining their great friends the British down here in Antarctica in their banishment. Now they can fight with each other for all eternity while both of their countries slowly freeze over. And just to get the ball rolling on this war, I'm gonna give this part of France the Britain. They told me hell was hot, but in truth, it's very, very cold. All right, I think there's a pretty easy fix for Portugal. And that's just to smash it into the Brazilian coastline. I'm not gonna make them part of Brazil though. This is because I want them to be tormented by the fact that they will now forever be the second largest Portuguese speaking nation on their continent. All right, the Nordics. You see, my problem here is that there aren't any problems here. So how about we make some? I wanna start off by giving all four of these nations a Russian exclave, all with a very sizable Russian speaking population. I also wanna make sure all of these nations are heavily indebted to China, forcing them to lease China a port for 99 years in exchange for forgiveness for their debts. And to finish it off, let's just say they were hit by a magnitude 10.0 earthquake. Oh, and uh, a couple nuclear bombs were dropped on them as well. There we go, not so perfect anymore. And what should we do for Iceland? Well, I think this one's pretty obvious, just switch them with Greenland so the names actually make sense. That fix was easy enough. And as for Poland, I'll just make them an actual Poland. I mean, that seems like a pretty logical fix. And as for these guys, let's see. We have Czechia, Slovakia, Austria, Hungary. Come on, you know what I gotta do here. That's right, say hello to Slovakia, Czechia, and Hungary, Austria. Okay, I think I fixed this continent. Let's just take a little tour of the new Europe, shall we? We have the Western European countries of Spain, Romania, and the Isle of Great Man. Over in the Southeast, former Mediterranean, we have the non-existent border between Greece and Turkey, as well as the very peaceful Balkans with Lake Peace in the middle. The Holy Roman Empire has been reinstated in the north, and the Nordics are now not so perfect. And in the new geometric Eastern Europe, we have Poland and Blokarus. Crimea has now been replaced by Bulgaria, and Serbia is sitting snug in the Caspian Sea. And of course, I single-handedly ended the Russo-Ukraine conflict by literally putting Ukraine in Russia. And you can't forget about me making Greenland and Iceland literally green and ice lands. So I'd say overall this continent is in a better shape than it's been in thousands of years. Oh, but don't worry, there are still many parts of the world that still need fixing. Anyways, hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys then.